Wade Stiltner with West Virginia Department of Agriculture, State Apiarist. We're here today on a beautiful day of talking about beekeeping. And we have a new lady with us, Jennifer Jenny Smith. And she may be interested in keeping bees and she's wanting to ask questions about what she needs to do. So, Jenny? Well, how do you get started? Well, one way of getting started in beekeeping is wherever area you live in, try to find your local uh, beekeeping association and find out if they was beginning beekeeping classes and to attend the beekeeping classes to get some first-hand knowledge and then maybe find a mentor or someone in that area that already has bees. We have a state beekeepers meeting in the spring and one in the fall. They offer classes then. Why should I have hives? Well, a lot of people in today's environment, we want to go back to West Virginia grown. So if you're growing fruit, blueberries, uh, watermelons, pumpkins, cantaloupe, you need pollinators. So why not have your own bees to pollinate to enhance your crops, your own healthy food that you're eating, but now you also have a healthy honey product that you know where it come from. Well, how many bees should I start out with? I would suggest no more than two colonies if you have the area to keep to. And the reason I say two, Bees are exactly like people. There's difference, and you can look behind you here in this apiary. That's one of my best colonies right here. It's got more boxes on top of it, so it means it produced more honey than the rest of them. And you look at some down here that didn't produce honey. So if you only have one hive, you really don't know if it's doing good or bad. You need to have something to compare with, so two colonies. Plus, if something happens to the one colony, if you get knowledge and training in your beekeeping, you can make it back up using the other one to make your increase instead of buying another colony again. What about the cost? The cost is expensive in today's environment of keeping bees, and that's why we want to educate, help people to get knowledge to keeping their bees so they don't lose their investment in it. And it is a hard fact to keep bees in today's times. The world is having a tremendous problem with bees. It, they are in danger. They need us to help take care of cause we need to help with the pollination of feeding animal. Most of the wild bees are all gone. It's the people that's keeping bees now that's doing the pollination. And since we're living in a state that's 75% forested, our bees is not only feeding the people that don't understand what you're talking about that has a guard that's still getting cucumbers and watermelons and pumpkins and apples and blueberries, we're helping feed the wild animals. Do I need any forms, fill out any forms? Are there any laws? How, how does that work? In West Virginia, and we have a Department of Agriculture, of course, the Apiary Registration Program. You must have your bees registered in the state of West Virginia. There's no fee for registering your bees. And to do that, we have also immunity law in our state. If you are following best management practices in West Virginia, which is simple practices, 14 of them, then it would stop you, I guess, from being sued un by not maintaining your bees correctly. I say it that way. So what if I want to sell my honey? Is there a big market for it? How do I do it? Actually, you're not ever going to have to worry about not selling your honey. We, in the United States, an example, only produces one quart of every gallon consumed in this country. So a market is tremendous, especially your neighbors, your family, your co-workers, you will not have a problem selling honey. But to sell your honey, you must contact the Department of Agriculture, which is another service that is free. They will help you have an approved label. You must register your label with the department and have a approved label to sell your honey. So where do I want to buy my bees? Do I want to buy local? Yes, we would actually like for everyone to buy local. Not only buying local helps the economy in our state, it also prevents foreign bacteria, viruses that may be somewhere else, bringing it in and spreading it amongst our bees. Mm -hmm. To buy bees, go to uh, the websites, uh, your local beekeeping organizations, the West Virginia Market Bulletin also advertises bees for sale in it, and make sure that when you do purchase bees that they have a health certificate. Well, we hear a lot about mites. Will that be a big problem for me? Yes, we have mites, but it's just taking care of them and keeping them under control Everybody has mites. Well, where do you need to locate your hives? I live in the city. Can I have them in the city? Okay, one thing, if you live in a city, you need to ask your local ordinances, your county or city ordinance, if they're allowed to have bees. Then you wanna make sure you have enough property in that to maintain the bees. If you live in an area where you're only gonna have 10 foot a yard, 
in the next neighbor's 10 foot over here and the next one, it's not a good place to keep bees. We have a beekeeping in West Virginia guide. It has the registration paper in the center. It also has the best management practices and the liability law and basic knowledge about beekeeping without going to classes and reading and understand a little bit as you're going to. So again, that's a free publication that you can get from the Department of Agriculture. Wait, what's inside a hive? Will you show me? Yes, let's just go ahead and suit up and we'll go inside and see what's in there. Okay. This is the main thing you want. Even though you may, sometimes I will be four hives down not using it, but you need it lit. You can take pictures of that. For the reason, if they do get out of control, this is the hickory switch. <laughs> when working a colony, you need to work from the rear of a colony because if you're standing in front, you're interfering with the bees coming in, so you're causing confusion on them. Sometimes, some of the bee books recommend blowing smoke in the front of the colony. I disagree with that, being a beekeeper most of my life, because why would you blow smoke and start running 30,000, 40,000 bees up here, then take the top off of it so they can greet you. And then again, if you want to find your queen in your colony, you got all your bees are running. So when we get a smoker going, we watch the wind direction, and it's coming this direction, and we can use the wind to help us. Always wear a veil for eye protection. We cannot worry about stings on our hands if you're not allergic, and you need to learn if you're allergic. If you get stung, do not pull the stinger out, flick it out to make sure that you don't push the venom in. So being gentle helps keep your bees calm. When you take your lid off, this is called a telescoping roof. We'll take this off and look here. Thousands of bees instantly. Look how calm, this is one way as beekeepers judges their bees. Look how calm, no bees is coming up and bothering. Very gentle bees, beekeeping can be a really good pleasure. Okay. The reason we use smoke, you see when we open a colony, these bees are standing up spraying a pheromone. And a lot of times that's an alarm pheromone to warn the other bees. So what we want to do is use the wind and a smoker to disarm that odor to where these other bees won't be upset by smelling that odor. So now we're going to open a colony gently. The snapping and the propolis, the sound that you hear it on the side of this is called propolis. This right here, it's a glue that they glue their, their colony, their air right here. So that's called propolis, so they glue their lid down. So when we come into a colony like this, the first thing we want to look at is where the majority of the nest is. That may be back in, back in here, is the majority of the bees are right in here. So when we have burr comb, and this is called burr comb, where they attach two pieces of wax together, we want to make sure that we take a piece of that out, like this, to where when we pull that up, that we don't crush any bees. The main thing is, if we crush the queen bee, we just hurt her colony. And do not throw this on the ground. This has got a little bit of honey on it, and if you throw it on the ground, you're having bears or other creatures that knows what this is and they, uh, they've come to your hive, so never throw anything on the ground. You want to keep your apiary very clean and neat. We're going to pull this frame up and we want to do it gently as we can. And you notice I'm not wearing gloves. And I already see the honey coming out. Yeah, well, this hive has got a right smart bit of honey on it. And this top brew box, this is a double deep. There's no set of rules of what you want to run is suit yourself. You may want to run an eight frame box. Mediums depend on your health and your, your ability. So this is a bigger box. This box here, completely full of honey, would weigh 80 pounds, just this top box. So we want to come up slowly and gently. All right, now what we're going to look for in a colony is this is drone brood. These are male bees right here. This is pollen and this is honey on the edges right here. So when we're inspecting the colony, we want to obviously look real quick for the queen to make sure that she's not on this frame. We come up with it. I'm looking quickly and I do not see her. Now we want to set this to the side. Some people use as frame holders. You want to put it to where you obviously don't trip it. We're going to pull another frame up. Each one of these are called frames. So we want to come up again and we want to go to the heart of the nest and here we go. This is the brood nest. This is a lot of nectar. See the nectar coming in? 
Look here at the, the juice that's called nectar, and this is the capped honey. This is baby bees, boys. Then we're looking down in here, and I have to look real close. I do not see eggs at the moment, so I'm looking for evidence of my queen still laying. You can see right here, bees being born right now. Wow, yeah. He's Here's just three babies right now out. being born. Here's the fourth baby coming up. When a queen is in full production in April, May, she is laying an egg every 10 seconds, so you can see how quick these bees are hatching. In the summertime, bees only live six weeks. These are called summer bees. That's the short life of a bee. We already saw that we have honey, we have pollen, we have baby bees, and we have lots of bees. So you're looking right here, and we're still seeing nectar coming in. So what they're ideally they're doing, they're pushing the queen out of this top box, getting preparing for fall. So they're pushing the queen out of the top box down to the, the this other brood chamber. These are double brood chambers. In other words, this belongs to the bees all the time. This is the honey that we take for ourselves. This belongs to the bees. So we never take honey away from them. This is what they need to live on through the winter. Now I see the baby bees. The new, this is evidence in my queens of land. See the little white little larva down in the bottom of those cells? Yes. That's the baby bees. So there, that shows you that the queen is still laying. And actually, if you look into this cell right here, I'm going to score the top of it so you can see the one that I marked. There's an egg in there. Mm -hmm. So that shows me my queen is a laying. And I do not have to keep this hive open any longer to look. It has everything it needs. It has baby bees. The bees are healthy. They have pollen. Now, how do the queen bees look different from the worker bees? Well, I was hoping that we would actually get lucky and find her. Let's look at another frame or two and see if we can. But we have a large, large nest down here. We'll try to find her today. And that's a good question. You do not have to find her. Some people feel compelled that they must find the queen. But if you find the evidence of the queen, you do not and she's probably in the lower brood chamber. This is all capped brood, and one thing about judging your colony, this is called a deep frame. On this one frame, if it was corner to corner with brood, this is worker brood, these are the females, and both sides, that would be 6,300 babies to be born in 21 days off here. The saying is, it takes a frame of honey to make a frame of babies. So we may not harvest a lot of honey from this colony, but through the summer, this colony will produce over a thousand pounds of honey that they need to live on. We, as beekeepers, only take surplus honey, the extra, if we've been blessed with a good year to have extra honey. Again, we want to look through here and find a frame that doesn't have burr comb on it. In between, if it does, to just gently take it out. And real easy. Pull up. And there I got a sting, two stings. And when you get stung, I, I'm actually getting stung at the moment. So when you do get stung, the first thing you want to actually do is flick it out like this. You want to take your smoker. You want to smoke that because they put a pheromone on that that the other bees smells it and it may sting in that same place. So you want to make sure. Again, I have done this for years so I do not swell. I know I don't have a reaction. Now to find a queen, we need to be a little bit faster to find it. So I'm going to go ahead and try to be a little bit quicker. Now since I got that pheromone going, I want to just use my smoke. Remember a while ago, I don't want to run them. I just want to let them know that I'm going to manage them right now a little bit. And this, when you're talking to beekeepers, you see the different colors of pollen, Jenny? Yes. Looks like m &Ms, different, different colors. That's what makes the bee colony healthy. They have so much different variety. And that's one good thing about having local, local bees that you can, they have their local pod, they're acclimated to the area. Now, of course, beekeeping has become in great demand that even West Virginia has a lot of people trucking their bees to California just to make the almonds. And that's a necessity. They have to have bees for the crops. 
And that's why some beekeepers get so discouraged, they've kept bees for years and have never saw their queen. And again, it's not that important that you see her if you see the evidence of her, what she's doing. She is actually going to look like a wasp. She's a lot longer and bigger. And you can still see we have a real good variety of pollen and brood. This is a really good, healthy colony. And as any beekeeper, this is what you want to see right here. Now, one thing we want to talk about, I do want to talk about in beekeeping, we're going into a traditional time of a dearth. You see what? And we don't want to keep a colony open too long because when we have a dearth and the bees smell this honey out here, they start fighting between the colonies, especially when you have apiaries, larger apiaries. So you don't want to keep a colony open too long. But for today, and we're not at that point just yet of the dearth, we're going to be nearing that in July. Still looking for mama. Oh, actually, Jenny, here is a mite on a worker bee. And I'm going to take that and pull this off. And let the people see what is hurting our honeybees. And it's going to be a hard to get off her, but we can take it to the camera. You see the little mite sticking on yes. the abdomen? Oh, yeah. Little. That little red mite. When we're talking about viruses and healthy bees and keeping bees, we are now faced with this new Zika virus, if I'm pronouncing that correctly. And that can be a mosquito transferring a virus from one human to another. These mites transfer viruses from one bee to another. So the mite itself is just not killing the individual bee, but it's biting them and causing viruses such as the Zika virus, malaria, or whatever. And they can transfer that amongst the bees, so it makes them very unhealthy, and they don't feel like going to work today, and they don't feed their babies, and they don't take care of them, so they get sicker and sicker. We, as people, we shake hands when we communicate. Bees feed one another by communicating. So you can see how quickly a virus can go through a colony when they are feeding one another and one of them is sick. So that is the, that's the reason colonies, and they call it colony collapse. Six weekends to us is so quick. We go to church two weeks, their kids got a ball game, and all of a sudden that's a half of a life to be, it's three weeks. So people think, well, I just looked at them a couple, wait a minute, a couple weeks ago. That's half a lifetime. So this is an inspection as a beekeeper. When you, if you decide that you want to do this, then you should go on your bees April, May, and June. My suggestion as a beekeeper and an inspector, every 10 days, April, May, and June. That's three times a month for three months. That's nine times. Then in July, August, September, October, every 15 days. So you take those months, that's two times, so you're not in your bees over 14 times a year. And if we used to not be doing a demonstration, this could have been done in 10 minutes if you know what you're doing. You put it back together and you're back to work in your flower garden, your vegetable garden, or doing your other chores. Now, sometimes if you've got a, a lot of bees on the side like this right here, gently shake them off to where you don't squish them when you're putting them back in. And you can see they're not upset. I know that buzzing sound makes people think they're upset, but they're not. Now, here is another reason and tool to use the smoker. We want to push these bees off because we'll set the other box down on top. So we, don't, we want these bees out of our way. We're going to reach down here and just hit this one with a quick shot underneath. So we move them bees off so we don't damage our bees. All right, now look, when I'm putting my box on, my top brood, I put it here and I take my fingers, I'm still under. And as I come down, I very gently wiggle it real easy and sit down so I don't, they move out of my way so I don't hurt my bees. Now we got all these bees on top. Watch how easily the wind's coming this direction. We use the wind and just turn them around and push them back down in to get them out of the way. And this is the reward of good beekeeping. This is a beautiful frame of capped honey. This is ready for the harvest. So one of the methods of harvesting honey, and this is not the best necessarily, but it's very efficient, is to just take a bee brush. And I'm gonna be honest, bees does not like to be brushed. <laughs> so what we wanna do, and we can actually shake the most of them that we can off, and we can take our brush and just gently brush our bees off 
like this. We have an empty box just like this and sitting here and we put the box to take it back to our house to harvest it for ourselves. So that's one method of, of an inexpensive way to harvest your honey. Another method, we'll put it back in, of harvesting honey and we have on this box three super, so it would take quite a while brushing that many three nine frames. Three nines is 27 frames of honey. This is called a fume board. It has got a felt inside here. It's black on this way to draw heat. And there's different brands or different kinds of Be Quick, Be Go, Honey Robber solution. You spray this on the inside of the colony or on the board. It's got a strong odor, which you can smell now. Almost like mm -hmm. a perfumey odor. We put this on and the sun will heat this box up and the bees does not like that odor and it will push them back down to their nest and you can take them off that way. Another way, I want to harvest all these two days from now, but I don't really want to deal with it. And a lot of work of doing all this stuff. So what I want to do is come inside right here, take my hive tool, Split my box. This is my honey super. And this weighs 35 pound full, so it's very, very heavy. So we want to set this box of honey off. Now this is called a honey excluder or a bee excluder. Now this is called a bee escape. It almost works in the same way as a mental trap. The bees goes down through here. They work their way through this and they don't go back up to their honey, so they want to come back out. So we're going to put this on right here. So now we put this hive back. In two days, we come back and all these bees will be worked down in here. And very little bees back up in the top. So when do you feed your bees and what do you feed them? Okay, if this colony right here is needing feed and we have our honey supers off, we want to make sure we do not feed the artificial food and get it in our honey stores because we don't want to do that. It's not honey. So we want to feed, but this is one type of feeder, and a lot of people put this on the front of their colonies, and I discourage beekeepers from doing that. Because when you put this feed out here, and some of these other colonies may come to try to get the feed also, and then they're attacking your weaker colony, and you cause it to actually lose that colony. The best method of feeding is one that's on top of this box right here. It's called a hive top feeder, and our cameraman can focus right in here so we can put our feed inside this box and this can feed if we do not have this type of smaller beekeeper you can take an empty box and I'm going to remove this feeder from this box if I can get it up out of there which is just an empty box and we'll take this feeder this type of feeder off this box right here and we take this same setup that these people and put it down here and feed this way hidden to where yellow jackets, hornets, other predators, or even a raccoon coming to your hive and not pulling your feet off for the sugar water. Put it in here where it's hidden and then put your hive back and feed it in here. Only this colony is getting that feed. If a colony needs food, do not have weak sugar water. Make it two to one. If you have a colony in the early in the spring, a nuke, and you're going to build you a brand new colony out of foundation, which we sh we'll talk about later, that you want to get it drawn out, then you make it 50-50, half sugar, half water. If your bees needs food, you want it two sugars to one water. So Wade, what is this? This is a nucleus colony. A beginning beekeeper can start with a nuke and local beekeepers sell these as getting a start without going out and buying a full colony of bees. And it, most of the time they can be anywhere from three frames, four frames, five frames, different different things. Most people generally goes by thirty to forty dollars per frame of bees you're buying. This is called foundation. It's comb that's not been made that gets the bees to start it straight. That's the reason if you didn't put this in a colony, they would build sectional comb. So this is very, very important to have good straight foundation to start building your colonies. What's the difference between a hive and a colony? Really, there's not a hive sometimes is the place that that people call the dwelling, like a, a box, a landstrip hive, a, a top bar hive, a skep. That is a hive where the bees live, basically like we call our homes. But a colony is the bees themselves. And then we got the slang, and I'm one of them, that talks different things in different ways. But uh, 
some of the older people, and I'm one of the older people, they call frames slats or sticks. It just depends on what part of the country you're from. So uh, one thing if we want to think about in the history of the United States, the uh, we didn't have a store. We didn't have groceries down the road. You didn't go buy a can of sugar. So most of the farms had a milk cow, of course. You had chickens for your eggs. You had your your other animals that you grew on your farm, your vegetables, your crops. But what you wanted something sweet. Everybody back then had bee colonies. Mm -hmm. And actually, West Virginia Department of Agriculture has a honey cookbook that converts the chart from honey to sugar, what to use in your cakes and your cookies and things. So feel free to pick a copy up from the department. Wade, thank you so much for teaching me all about bees today. Well, you're welcome. Good luck and hope you get into beekeeping. Thank you.